In this video, we will show how to use a PE Micro multi-link debug probe together with CLINE to run and debug your code on an ARM-based microcontroller. Here's a diagram of the setup we will be using. A debug probe is a piece of hardware that sits between the microcontroller you run the code on and the computer you use to write the code. Its purpose is to make the process of developing, deploying and debugging your code faster and easier. The particular probe we have chosen for this video is the PE Micro USB Multilink Universal FX. It connects to your computer via a standard USB connection and it talks to the target device via a protocol called SWD, which stands for Serial Wire Debug. You can find out more about these debug probes on PEMicro.com. Our target device today is a blue pill. That's a very basic standard embedded platform featuring an STM32 F103C6 microcontroller CPU with one 32-bit ARM Cortex M3 core running at 72 MHz clock speed. Our goal today is to implement Blinky. That's something like the hello world of embedded development. We're going to use the C-Line IDE and the debug probe to make the LED on the blue pill blink. That involves the following steps. First, we're going to install the required software. Then we're going to connect the hardware. Then we're going to configure and generate our project, which we're going to then open in C-Line. Then we're going to use C-Line to write the code that makes the LED blink. We're going to create a C-Line run configuration. And then finally, we're going to build and run the code. So let's start by preparing our development environment and installing the required software. First, we will need a piece of software called STM32 CubeMX. That is a code generator, which we will need to generate our project with the initialization code required for our particular microcontroller. You can download this code generator at st.com. Now, in order to use CLINE to build the code for our target device and debug it there, we need to install the toolchain and the GDB server on our development machine. We're not going to go through those steps in this video in detail, but they are described in the CLINE documentation. To find out how to install the toolchain, you can go to jetbrains.com slash help slash CLINE, then to build, run, debug, then embedded development and scroll down to toolchains and compilers. This contains all the steps you need to install the toolchain. Since our target device is an ARM Cortex-M, you should use the GNU ARM toolchain. Now we need to install the custom GDB server for PE Micro. The steps to do this are also described in a C-Line documentation. Go to Embedded GDB Server and scroll down to set up the PE Micro GDB server. You can also navigate to these help pages by clicking on the hyperlinks in the video description. Installing the custom GDB server for these debug probes is unfortunately not very straightforward because they currently ship their GDB server inside an Eclipse plugin and you will have to extract it from there. You can follow the instructions described here. You will also need to install the drivers for the debug probe itself, which you can download from the PE Micro website. Now we have installed the necessary software components, so we can connect the hardware. The device probe is going to connect to our computer via USB, but we are not there yet. The first thing we need to do is to connect the blue pill to our PE Micro debug probe. If you flip open the plastic case of the P-Micro, it reveals multiple different pin headers that let you connect to the bug probe to a whole range of embedded devices. On the blue pill, we have four pins, one for power, one for ground, and two for the SWD interface. Let's first connect the cables to the target device. Now we have to figure out which pins to connect to on the debug probe. For that, we will need to look into the documentation from PE Micro. On their product website, under Support and Downloads, there is a PDF called Multilink Universal FX Text Summary that describes the pin layout. We are interested in port B. That's the standard port for all ARM Cortex devices. We have to connect the wires to these four pins on port B. Power, any of the available ground pins, and the two pins for the SWD interface. The P-Micro actually comes with a whole set of ribbon cables, but today we are going to use normal female-to-female -female jumper wires instead. Now we are going to connect the debug probe to our development machine via USB. 
And we're also connecting the target device to the power adapter, which is also delivered via USB. Now we're going to use the STM32 CubeMX code generator to generate our project that we will later open in C-Line. First, we need to select the right microcontroller and enter the exact name. In this case, we have an STM32F103C6T6A. Now we click on Start Project. Here, we see the microcontroller and all the pins that it has. Pin PC13 is the one that's connected to the LED that we want to blink. So we select the mode GPIO output for this pin and we enter a user label, which is an identifier we can use later to refer to this pin in the code. Let's just call it LED. Now we have to configure the project itself. We need to say where it should be placed on disk, then the project name, and finally, we need to select the IDE for which we select STM32 cube IDE. Now we can click on generate code. This will generate a project for the STM32 cube IDE. Thanks to our embedded plugin, CLINE understands this project's format. So we can now switch to CLINE and open this project directly in CLINE. CLINE is asking us to select a board config file. We don't need to do this here, so it's best to skip this step. Now we have our project open in CLINE and we can write the code that makes our LED blink. Let's go to main.c, which we can easily find with a go to file dialog. Here, we can use CLINE's navigate file structure to quickly find the main function. Let's find the infinite loop and toggle the pin that's connected to the LED. For this, we will use the function HAL GPIO toggle pin. The STM32 CubeMX code generator generated some variable names for us, starting with the LED prefix that we specified earlier. So we can just use that here. CLINE's code completion makes this really easy so we don't have to type out those variable names. And CLINE also shows us parameter hints so we can easily see what each function parameter stands for. After toggling the LED, we use another function, HAL delay, to introduce a 350 millisecond wait. And since this is running in an infinite loop, this will cause the LED to blink. And that's it, this is our code. Now we have to create a run configuration, so we can run this code on the microcontroller. Let's go to run, then to new embedded configuration. We need to select the GDP server type, which in this case is the PE micro, and the location of the GDP server executable on disk. We don't need to configure anything else here, so let's give our new run configuration a name and click Next. Here, we again have to choose the correct microcontroller. Just like almost anywhere in CLINE, we can just start typing the string we're looking for in order to find it in the list. Now we click on Create, and now we have a run configuration. Now we can click on Debug, our project is compiling, then GDB server is starting. It's launching the code on the device through the debug probe. And we can see that the LED is blinking. And that's how we use the PMicro debug probe with CLINE. Here are again the links that I mentioned throughout this video, and you can also find them in clickable form in the description of this video. If you have any more questions about the setup, please let us know in the comments. And if you like to check out the latest version of CLINE, you can download a 30-day free trial on jetbrains.com/cline. Thanks for watching.